Welcome and thanks for joining us. We'll be sharing our tip on how to tailor your resume for tech roles and showcase the skills and experience we manage to looking for. My name is Jason and I'm a senior technical and product recruiter here at Photosite. I'm joined by Dominique and Sharon. Dominique, you can introduce yourself. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. My name is Dominique West. I'm based out of the New York City area and I lead the governance risk and compliance team at Datadog. I have over a decade of experience in the information technology and security domain, currently specializing in digital cloud transformation and cybersecurity strategy. Uh, beyond my career, I'm a partner, a daughter, a best friend to some wonderful people, and I enjoy balancing my career through things like traveling, reading, swimming, and currently building some Legos. Alrighty, Sharon. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Sharon Prince, and I work as a principal cloud architect for a project with the United States Garment Agency. I also own my own consulting firm, and I'm the president of an international nonprofit. So let's start out with some insights into the market. As many of you may be experiencing, the current tech market is saturated. There are more candidates than open roles. In the past, I was lucky as a tech recruiter to see 30 to 60 applicants in a week, where in the current landscape, I'm seeing hundreds of applicants in the first couple of days after posting a new position. As a candidate, you need to be more intentional with your search and with how you build out your resume. In the current market, candidates typically need at least 80% of the skills listed on the job description to be considered for the role and you will see more the most success if you are applying for those roles early. I myself am looking for keywords and experience that shows your background aligns to the tech stack, experience type, and work environment at the organizations I'm recruiting for. You will get a lot of insight into the organization's search based on the job description. With this in mind, understand that companies are using keywords when reviewing resumes. The majority of organizations are using human recruiters, but some organizations use AI-powered resume scanners. In either case, there is a lot of reliance on those keywords. Technical recruiters are not subject matter experts in every role that they work on. They will be relying on your resume to show them how you are a match for the position based on the information listed within the job description. Industry jargon can sometimes be overlooked, so make sure you are building your resume in a way that technical and semi-technical individuals can understand it. And you can do this by creating a general application resume that lists out what you're building what your role was, why the organization wanted it built, and how you built it. This should include what technologies, languages, libraries, frameworks, and tools were used in the build. Or you can build out um, a tailored resume to your application and highlight what technologies you have worked on that align with the job description. The more experience you have that's highlighted um, within that job description, um, the better odds are you'll have to have an initial phone interview with a recruiter. Dominique and Sharon, do you have anything you want to add here? The only thing I would add to that is keywords is not only helpful with your resume in terms of job searching, but it's also helpful for those who are looking to get to the next level. Perhaps you're looking to get a more senior role or perhaps you're looking to switch industries. Those keywords that you find and search um, are also helpful for you to learn like, hey, what are employers looking for? And then what skills should I build upon, right? How do I use that to upskill or to maybe go take a course. And so that's the only thing I would add is that's definitely useful, not only for searching for jobs, but also for upskilling in the future. All righty. Well, I'm sure we have folks listening who might not have a traditional college degree or tech experience. What resume advice do you have for folks who don't have a traditional background or extensive prior tech experience? I think the advice I'd give would be a bit twofold. Uh, I'll focus on those who perhaps already have experience in some industry, right? It might not be tech, um, and but you have some experience in which you probably just need some help on translating that experience into uh, applicable to the job description or the industry or the company that you're trying to get into. And so for those who might not have a traditional background, I always advise, hey, just figure out the language, right? You're talking about project management, or you might be talking about skills that kind of apply across the board that perhaps you just need to tweak a little bit to showcase to your recruiter, like, hey, this is work that aligns directly with this role, or perhaps doesn't look the same. My stakeholders might not be technical engineers. They might have been students, or they might have been you know, my colleagues or different kinds of peers at different levels. And so it's just tailoring that audience and um, doing perhaps some courses are building a portfolio to showcase, like, here's how I'm uh, taking personal accountability to upskill myself to show how I, I can align with this role. I love that. 
help me help you, right? Um, the more information you can give me on how your previous roles align with the role that you're applying to, the more helpful I can be as a recruiter to get you to that hiring manager. Awesome. Sharad, any thoughts there? Another important thing is certifications, right? Um, they can really get help with getting your resume noticed, right? Three things come to my mind. Um, you know, the first one is proof of knowledge, right? That you know your stuff. Um, it, anytime people see that you have a certification, they automatically treat that with respect and assume you know at least a decent amount about the subject matter. In my experience, it quite literally opens a door of approval that without the certification, you would have to actually find another way to prove yourself, which is often difficult to do when someone is just reviewing your resume and not talking to you face-to-face -face yet in an interview, right? So this really helps the employer know or have comfort with like, okay, I'm, I'm getting comfortable with this resume right now, right? That kind of feeling. The second one is proof of hard work. In addition to listing your certifications on your resume as if it was a stamp of approval, it also shows that you're determined enough in your career that you have actually taken it seriously and put in the effort to stand out and grow. It also shows that you're willing to work for something and not just get by. It's good proof, right? Getting certifications also shows motivation and that speaks volumes to employers, leaders, teams, management, et cetera, right? Anyone. People, employers want to hire and work with motivated people who are growing. So that, that really helps, right? You've learned and developed your skill in a way that you can more fully do your work and execute work in your role. We all have been there with work to do and not being confident in how we do something. But gaining certifications gave me confidence I needed to do more than I ever thought I was capable of. The certifications built on top of the knowledge base I had in each subject. Sometimes it was an area I had experience in, and sometimes I just didn't know that stuff. So learning from scratch, there you go, right? Um, you know, by the time I had finished studying and achieved a certification, the understanding I had also gained in the subject was priceless and made the work I do even more enjoyable. And again, when employers see that you know your stuff, they know it. They can tell the way you're talking, the way you present yourself, the way you explain or answer a question more in a technical manner, you know, um, they know that you know your stuff, right? So um, those are a couple of things that I think um, that can really help. Perfect. And I love the insight into the confidence and making sure that you can speak to the technology getting that there. Um, Sharon, you had some prior tech experience, but had to upskill in your own time to gain the cloud mastery you have today. Beyond certifications, are there any other areas you did to sh that, or any other things that you did to showcase your tech experience? Anything that you learned that you wish you knew when you started? <laughs> yeah. So to be honest, um, certifications is what made my resume stand out, right? I mean, in my resume, if you look at the bulk of the page was resumes, at least half, right? Um, towards my domain of expertise, towards, you know, so, and that was definitely a, an eye catcher for my employer at that time, right? Or um, who is looking at my resume, right? And basically it shows like, hey, uh, this person who's applying for this job knows, uh, you know, has proof that, hey, they know how to do it, right? In terms of certifications. Anyways, apart from that, um, what comes to my mind um, is actually experience, right? If you're new, um, you know, I would I would try to, try to gain experience somehow, either as an intern, taking a lower paying role, whatever it takes to gain real experience in addition 
to or beyond a classroom, right? Also, another thing is networking and growing your relationships. They can really help you in the long run. So I really say or tell everyone, like, invest in those relationships, right? Whether it is by attending a meetup group or a conference in your domain, right? Get yourself in front of people in that field, right? You never know what can happen. And to be honest, most of the opportunities and the people that I have that are helping me as of today, the references I get, these are all coming from my previous employers and the relationships that I have with them. Um, And you will, you will know as you're starting your career that, Hey, you know, this matters a lot and it goes a long way. Um, It might not be as visible at the beginning, but as years goes by, you will see what I'm talking about. You can train for skill, um, but you can't train for the person that's going to be excited and ready to be uh, ready for an opportunity. So make sure you're coming into your interviews personable and um, you're trying to make you a good impression. Um, in addition, with the networking piece that you mentioned, um, references are highly valued at almost every organization I've ever worked at. Um, so if you build the right network and the right um, right relationships with people and you're able to get a reference and you have that good network, it will translate into job opportunities. It will translate into interviews. Um, there's been a number of times where there's been a resume where I was like, Is, this one's close. It's teetering on the edge, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, but then it's a re- reference or I get a message from a hiring manager saying, hey, I want you to look at this person. And then all of a sudden they're moving through the process. Um, so if you build the right relationships, it will translate into to job opportunities there. So shifting into it, uh, resumes are not uh, are important, but uh, they don't tell the full candidate story. Uh, interviews are also a key part of the, the hiring process. What are the most important things you both look for in an application for a technical role and during the interview? So I'll start with Dominique. Absolutely. I'll focus in on the interview. I think we spoke a lot about keywords and perhaps how to tailor your resume, but um, I'd like to focus or hone in on what someone can maybe showcase or speak about when they're having a conversation with a recruiter or hiring manager, whoever during the interview process. Um, Something I always ask about and look for is proactivity, Um, asking candidates about a time where perhaps they, you know, were working on something and didn't know the answers and found some solutions or just tried something, right? Um, I I do work at a pretty fast-paced company, and so we really value those who just try, right? I, I think we... Um, give a space, a safe space enough for people to make mistakes and understand if something doesn't work out and be able to experiment, so to speak. And so having that kind of mindset to say, cool, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do, but let me try this out, (laughs) right? Or here's something that I can bring to the table, I think goes a really long way. And so having examples that showcases how you perhaps went above and beyond or tried something out and didn't know, but hey, I think this, you know, might be around around the long path. goes a really long way, I think, to an interview process. And then the second thing I would say is curiosity, Uh, similar to what Sharon talked about with passion and how do you showcase that I'm interested in this? Curiosity is also a great way to showcase that, right? It's like, hey, I have questions about this particular field, or I noticed this was a common theme when I'm looking at um, maybe various, uh, uh, what do you call them, job descriptions. And so can you tell me a little bit about how you're doing that at this company? I always encourage people to have questions at the end end of an interview. And sometimes those questions you ask is showcasing curiosity into a process or a company or someone's day to day. And so those two qualities really stand out to me, excuse me, whenever I'm interviewing for um, and candidate, and because like I said, resumes, you'll put your keywords, you'll put everything that you need to know, but it's really during the interview process as we're having a conversation. How do you feel about this? How are you navigating this space? How are you providing yourself um, the best foot forward is, is really what's important. Um, one thing that comes to my mind that during that always stands out to me is the ability for the person to be honest, right? Um, and if they don't, you know, just that mentality to be honest. And then I want to know if, okay, if you don't know, you're going to figure it out, right? That mentality, right? Um, 
that that is something that I always look for someone in an in- interview, right? It's a good call out because we'll know if you perhaps don't know the answer to a question. And so it's okay to say, hey, exactly. I don't know. I haven't had that experience, but here's maybe how I would think about it. Exactly. Perfect. Yes. Exactly. On my end, I generally catch the front end of the interview process, right? I'm talking to first interviewers uh, going into the process. So I'm getting a lot of questions. So I get a lot of questions about the role, the company, things along those lines. What stands out to me is when somebody's done their research, right? They understand what company they're coming into. They understand what they're applying for. And they're able to speak and put their resume into the context of the position that they're applying for. Um, If you can be concise and say, hey, this is why I'm interested in the role. This is what got me excited about it. And this is why I'm here talking to you today. That's going to get me really excited as a recruiter because I know that you understand our organization. And then I understand that you have a passion, just like Sharon was talking about earlier, for the role and have a reason to actually want to apply. Um, When I connect with you and the answer is, I don't know about your company. I applied to a bunch of roles. This is a random position that, that I'm getting a call for. You're, you're shutting yourself out. You're locking yourself out of the organization. Uh, I try to give a lot of people the benefit of the doubt, and I give them education on the organization, and I ask them and try to tie their skills still to the role. But I know that if they don't come and bring that, that, that knowledge or a little bit of that research into that second interview, they're not going to be very successful. Um, so if they're a great candidate still, they have a lot of the qualities. It's not that I will tell them, hey, you're not going to be eligible for the position. I still may move you forward. But in that second interview with that hiring manager, um, you, you better come prepared and you better have your research. Uh, but that, that'll give you um, the knowledge and the ability to speak to some of the pieces that everybody here is talking about. Like, um, you know the tech stack, it's in the job description, you've researched it, and now you can speak to those. And then if you don't know something and you get a question on it, now you can speak to, this is what I don't know, but this is what I've done a little bit of research on to show that you're at least being proactive and being ready to go for that next step. Um, so I think that that's important to be um, to, to be prepared for your interview and have some knowledge about the company that you're going into. Any final thoughts? I think there was one point earlier that I'd like to follow up on that Sharon had mentioned, and that was about networking and community I cannot overstate how important that is in not only getting into this field, but staying in this field. Um, I think there's some notions of just perhaps the um, monetary value that jobs in the tech field can provide you, which they absolutely can. And there are great pathways to maybe wealth management, but I would definitely hone in on the community aspect. I've made a ton of friends through this field of just going to meetups or Um, engaging on uh, conversations on LinkedIn. It's provided so many opportunities and overall just helps make this experience a little bit better, right? And that's what you want when you're coming into a working field. So I want to maybe reemphasize the importance of building a community as you're getting in, because it'll help you not only with your resume and interviews, but really long in your career. I wanted to add one thing. It's not completely relevant to the question, but it's important. It's to know your why are why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you working? Why are you going for a job? Why are you applying for this career? Why do you want to do that? And this really helped me to ask the why question before I started my journey on my certification, my certification journey. Um, to know your why, because to identify your why is more important so that you can, it's not, you can get inspired for a day. Maybe a week, maybe a month, but what are you going to do on rainy days, right? So it is your why that's going to keep you going. And your why should be more than just me. Yes, I have needs too, but you know what? Let me look outside that. That is going to keep you going and get you going longer. And to have that mentality, you know, it's just not me, but also the people around me, how I can help. And it's going to get you further than you ever can envision um, you yourself going, right? So identify your why and let it be more than just me, right? All righty. Thanks for sharing that, Sharon. Uh, I completely agree. Finding your why or your purpose is extremely valuable. No matter what career field you work in, it helps to give you that motivation to push forward uh, when you need it. 